Good evening and welcome to the Bayou Church's online Good Friday service. My name is Carol Mills and I'm the Director of Ministries here at the Bayou Church. On behalf of our entire team, we are so grateful that you have decided to join us this evening. We believe that the next few moments will not only be historic, but also an incredibly life-giving experience for us as a church as we prepare to celebrate the Lord's Supper in a way that we never have before, separated. Everyone in a different location, some of you have crackers, some have bread, Gatorade, juice, water. Maybe some of you are not partaking of the elements because of your location this evening. And many would say, how can there be unity when you are so separated? But we know, those of us who have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that we are one in the Lord no matter where we are. And so tonight, this may be one of the most special communions that we've ever celebrated together. So I encourage you to lean in, reflect, pray, prepare your hearts, and let's celebrate the Lord's Supper together.
Love it, love it. That's so good, so good. There was one time years ago when I thought I killed somebody. Kid you not, I literally thought I killed somebody. So I'm hanging out with my dad, we're playing golf together, and uh, one of the things you've got to keep an eye on when you're playing golf is before you hit, before you tee off, you've got to make sure the people that are in front of you are far enough away that you can't reach them, that you can't hit them. And I thought they were. There was plenty of distance, there's no way I'm going to get there. But I hit one of the best golf shots of my life, and this ball just took off. And it kept going, and I thought, there's no way. Oh, yep. Yep, it's getting, and I kid you not, the, the most weird sound I've ever heard in my life, it was this loud thump as my golf ball struck the top of their golf cart. And my dad and I froze and we just stared at each other and I thought, oh my, I was this close, literally, to hitting somebody in the head and potentially taking their life. And I thought, oh, this is gonna be so awkward. They're gonna be so ticked. So we drive our golf cart and we get close to them. And, and right as I'm about to speak to them and to apologize and, and hope they're not too mad at me, my dad puts his arm in front of me to kind of tell me, hey, I got this. And he begins to speak to them and he says, guys, I'm sorry. That's my bad. I thought you guys were further away and that's my fault. And I, and I just sat there amazed that my dad, who did nothing wrong, I was the foolish one. I was the one who, who made the mistake. I was the one who messed up, who, who could have killed somebody. Yet my father took the blame to these two. To, to this day, these guys don't know that it wasn't me, that it wasn't my dad, but that it was me. And I was just blown away at what my dad did for me. It, it, I, I know my dad loves me, and I've had many moments where, where I've experienced that, but there were, this moment elevated the level in which I understood how much my father loved me. It changed our relationship that day, many years ago, and it helped me to understand just who he is and just how much he loves me. Have you ever had someone bail you out before? Someone come in at the right moment and rescue you? Someone, someone take the blame for you? Someone who had no responsibility whatsoever for, for what you did wrong, how you messed up, but they stepped into your place. They took your spot and took the blame for you. If you have, how did that make you feel? What, what went through your heart and your mind when that happened? What, what, how, what, what must that have meant? about your relationship with them. Why did they do that? And what did that make you think of when it came to how you relate to them? See, God, in an infinitely greater way, did this exact same thing. He stepped in and took the blame for every single thing that you and I have ever done wrong in our entire lives. What does that mean about who God is? What does that mean about what he thinks about you? That's exactly what God did on Good Friday. Good Friday is the day where God's extravagant love collided with his righteousness and it collided on the cross, on Jesus Christ. Hundreds of years before Jesus went to the cross, here's what the prophet Isaiah wrote in chapter 53. It says, he was despised and rejected, talking about Jesus, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. He was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be made whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet, yet, the Lord laid on him, on Jesus, the sins of us all continues, unjustly condemned, he was led away. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone, but he was buried like a criminal. But it was the Lord's, this word, this is crazy. It was the Lord's good. It was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. He will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear all their sins. Good Friday. You ever thought about why we call it Good Friday? 
Good Friday wasn't good for Jesus. See, Jesus' bad Friday became our good Friday. It was good for us. His brokenness became our healing. His death became our invitation to life. And there are three things scriptures teach us about how to respond to this this incredible news, more than my dad taking blame for a, a, a poor golf shot, a foolish moment, your heavenly father has stepped in to pay for all of your, all of your sins, past, present, and future. And what's even more amazing is what he asks us to do in response. He doesn't say, all right, go to church, start being good. And man, if you can earn enough good to outweigh the bad. No, because we, we can never do that. We can never make up for our debt. So he, this is even more extravagant. Here's what God tells us. First thing he tells us is to turn away, to turn away from the way we used to live. The, you remember how Isaiah said, following our own path? Turn away from that path and turn towards Jesus. Here's my question for you. Aren't you tired of living for less than what God made you for? Aren't you tired? Aren't you exhausted? See, sin offers us this, this high, this, this gain, but really what sin does is, is it takes from our soul. It sucks the life from us. Here's Jesus' invitation to you to turn. Here's how he said it. He said, come to me, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. So is that what you need to do today? Do you need to turn away from your life, away from what the world's offering, and turn towards Jesus? Is that you? Man, let's do that. Let's do that. Secondly, here's what the scripture tells us. First we turn, then we believe. Then we believe. Look, it, Jesus summarized it right here. He said, this is the only work that God wants from you. This is it, you ready? Believe in the one he has sent. Believe in Jesus. So turn, believe. And the third thing is which what we're doing on this Good Friday is to remember, is to remember what Jesus did for us on the cross, the depths that he went to for your sin and my sin. Here's how Jesus said it at the Last Supper with his disciples, his final moment before he went to the cross. He tells his disciples as he takes the bread and the wine, he says, do this in remembrance of me. Your way 
born as my own As Christ is formed in me Hallelujah I live my life in remembrance Hallelujah Your promise I won't forget If ever I shouldn't lose my way If ever I deny your grace Remind me of the price you pay Hallelujah I live in remembrance So I've got one of my kids' cups from home, the smallest cup I have in my house. Got some water in here. I know you guys have gotten your own elements, whatever you choose to use. And I've got, this is the only crackers I have in my house right now. We went through the saltines already. And now I've got some Ritz crackers here for our elements. And I want to teach you, if you haven't gotten those, you can grab those real quick. But I want to teach you just real briefly on what communion is or what Jesus calls the, the Lord's Supper. And first off, it's a reminder, as we just said, to, to remember what Jesus has done for us. Secondly, it's a symbol, right? Like when we gather at the church, we have specific kind of unleavened bread and we have grape juice, but those aren't, the substance of these things aren't important. These are just symbols, right? So this is symbolic. It doesn't transform into anything when I take it. And the same thing with Jesus, when he, when he passed around the bread and he passed around the juice, he didn't, he didn't literally pass around his body and pass around his blood. He passed around bread and wine. And those were symbols of what he was about to do, what he was about to give. And look, that's why it's okay in this time in life that we're, you know, under quarantine and stay at home orders. It's okay that it's, it's just water and it's just a, I've never taken Lord's Supper with a Ritz cracker, but it doesn't matter because it's a symbol. It's, it's about what it represents. Third thing is that this is a statement of faith. Paul says it this way in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. 26. He says, for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you, here's what you're doing. You are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So, so we're proclaiming what Christ has done for us, that he has broken his body and that he has shed his blood for us. Fourth thing is, is, who is this for? This is for people who have received that, who, as I've said earlier, have turned from their ways and believe in Jesus and follow him. And that's not you yet. That, I'm, I love that you're here and we, we want you to observe and to learn and to see what we're doing. But this is for people who have made Jesus their Lord and their Savior. Maybe you have some kids watching today and they haven't made that decision. That's okay. In God's time, we pray and we hope that they will. And they can watch it and watch their parents do this and learn about what this is about. But this is for people who have put their faith in Jesus. And fifth, the scriptures tell us to take it with the right heart. To, to not do it with a, um, a heart that's unaware of its position and its posture. Meaning, look, we all have sin on our hands. But, but as Jesus said, if, you, if you've got sin against your brother, don't come to church and raise your hands. Go reconcile with your brother and then come and offer your praise in the temple. So it is with the Lord's Supper. The question isn't if we have sin on our hands. The question is, is what have we done with it? And so I'm going to just pray real quick and lead you in a prayer just to confess. We all need to confess our sin to God so that our hearts are pure and ready to take communion. So let's do that right now. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, uh, we come before you, Lord, as people who need you. We need you more than we even see and realize, Lord. We need you every second of every day, Lord. And Lord, I, as the pastor, confess, Lord, that, I, that I've sinned, that I've fallen short. I haven't spoken the way that I've spoken. I haven't thought the way that I should have thought. I haven't treated people the way that I should have always treated them, Lord. And, and I just admit to you, that I'm fallen and I, and I need you, Lord. And I ask, this is what's so cool, Lord, that I get to ask you for forgiveness and you tell me that I can receive it with confidence and not just keep begging for forgiveness, but instead repeat my appreciation. So thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Thank you for Jesus and what he did so that I can be forgiven, Lord. And Lord, as we take these elements, 
to remember what you did for us, Lord. We, we do, we, we announce what you did for us and we announce that you're gonna come again one day, Lord. Thank you that we don't deserve to be here, Lord. We don't deserve to, to experience communion with you, but we get to because Jesus and what he did on the cross for us, Lord. Thank you for how good you are to us, Lord. We love you so much. We pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. So this is what Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. He said in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three, 23, on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took some bread and he gave thanks. So go ahead and grab whatever bread you have, cracker bread, it's up to you. And he gave thanks to God for it. And he broke it into pieces. And he said, and he passed it around to his disciples. And he says, this is my body, which is given. The son of God, perfect, holy, blameless, righteous, good, loving, gave. Pilate didn't take his life. The Pharisees didn't take his life. He gave it away willingly. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. So let's go ahead and eat the bread. Thank you, Lord, for your body that was broken for me, Lord. Thank you. He continues, Paul said, in the same way Jesus took the cup of wine, to so go ahead and grab whatever cup or liquid you have. He took the cup of wine after supper, saying this, Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant. Just take this in for a second. We've got the Old Testament and the New Testament. Testament could be substituted for the word covenant. The old covenant of try and earn your way to God, try to obey the law, try to be perfect. How's that working for you? It can't work for me, I've tried, it doesn't work. This is the cup of the new covenant, the new testament, the new agreement that Jesus has offered. Instead of us trying to earn our own righteousness, we receive it through the blood of Jesus. The new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed by blood, as we saw in the first covenant with Abraham. This is agreed upon, made possible only as a blood covenant the pure blood of a spotless sacrifice named Jesus. He says, as often as you do this, as often as you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. Let's drink. Heavenly Father, thank you for not just some gift you sent to us, Lord, and said, hey, enjoy this. No, Lord, you showed up. You were that gift. And you didn't just go, hey, try this, do this, direct us. No, Lord, you, you stepped in and took the blame, took the penalty, took the punishment, gave your body, gave your blood for me, Lord, so that I could be welcomed in, adopted into a family that I had no right to show up towards and to be called the child of God. Thank you, Lord, for how much you love us. Thank you for how you demonstrated that on the cross through Jesus, Lord. Thank you for your bad Friday that became our good Friday. God, we love you so much. We do remember you on this day. And we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Man, let's sing some more. You've been so, so good to me. Yeah, you've been so, so good to me. Oh, to think where I might be if not for you, if not for you. 
supper table, goes into the garden, and it begins. It's arrested, beaten, falsely accused, mocked, flogged. Isaiah says, beaten so bad they wouldn't recognize him. And he goes to the cross, and they nail him nail him to that cross and he gives his life and he breathes his last breath and they take him down and they put him in a tomb and that's how Friday ended enemy thought he'd won disciples, the followers were scared for their lives, they're thinking they're next it's over Rome has triumphed it's over and though it was Friday though it was dark Though it felt absolutely hopeless, Sunday was coming. Sunday was coming. Look, I know right now we all feel like it's Friday, don't we? Who would have thought we'd be here locked down for a month, people getting sick, people dying, economy in shambles. Man, it feels like Friday. But that's why I'm so excited to celebrate with you on Easter Sunday. Because though it's Friday, Sunday is is coming. So, hope you'll join us this Sunday, but I need you to do some things. I need you to get ready. Personally, get ready. Ask the Lord to move, to remind you of, of what he did for us. And this wasn't even the greatest part. The resurrection is. So get ready. Do this. Pray, pray for the Bayou Cert. Pray for, there are going to be thousands of church services all around the globe. There are going to be millions of people, I believe, around the globe who are in the middle of this crisis, but they're going to hear the message and the hope of Jesus, and they're going to respond, and they're going to discover that God has been with them the whole time. They're going to find new faith. So pray for the, that to happen through the bayou, but also around the world. God's going to use this tragedy to do something incredible, something miraculous. Here's the other thing I need you to do. This is, this is your part. I need you to invite. Invite some people to join you online. Share some graphics. Let people know. Send out some text messages. And invite people to be here to hear the greatest message they'll ever hear in their entire lives. The message that Jesus took their place, that he died so that they could live. Invite somebody, and we'll see you this Sunday for our Easter services at 8 a.m., 9.30 a.m., and 11 a.m. Broadcast from here, from the Bayou, live for you.
Look, we've loved getting to do this this evening with you. What a joy and an honor to get to celebrate and remember what Jesus did for us on Good Friday. We love you guys very much. We can't wait to get to see you this Sunday. Y'all have a great rest of your day.